It's going to go up on YouTube. I promise, promise, promise. Okay, can everybody see okay? I think we're in good shape. <clears throat> All right, guys, this is Lynn Stevens. She is an author, a speaker, and a consumer psychology expert. And I'm going to let her kind of expound on that because <laughs> I am not going to assume that I can do that title justice. So go ahead, Lynn. Okay. Um, like Christy said, my name's Lynn Stevens. It's spelled a little funny, but mm -hmm. it's a family name. Um, but it is pronounced Lynn in case any of you are wondering. And um, my company name is Think Splendid. That's thinksplendid.com. It's the same on all the social, Instagram, Twitter, Periscope, all of it, Think Splendid. But I study behavioral psychology. And so that's pretty broad, but basically I study how people behave, think, make decisions, how, um, how that ties into marketing with business, how that ties into infrastructure and improving our business systems, and all of that. So it's pretty broad, but um, and just a quick clarification, I am not a therapist. I am on the <laughs> research side. So just this isn't therapy, this isn't if you have a mental health professional, great. But that's not what I do. I do the research side and then consult based on that. Great. Okay. So, guys, today I think um, I, I usually like to open it up to questions. Um, <laughs> sounds great. Okay, good. I'm glad you can hear us and everything sounds good. So, um, we're going to talk a little bit about, obviously, you guys know, I'm launching, um, the books are pre on pre-sale right now, the watercoloring books, and I'm really talking a lot about art and its impact on our lives and on our businesses lately. And that's really kind of at the heart of what I want to talk about today. Um, but if you guys have any questions, I I'd love to start with questions. Does anybody have any questions, anything that you're just dying to hear us talk about in terms of business and social media and art and the impact that it has on our lives? And I know those are all crazy different topics, but if there's anything you have a question about, go ahead and shout it out and I'm going to write it down like I did last time so that we can make sure we address it. Anybody, you guys awake out there? <laughs> um, okay. All right. Well, guys, if you don't have any questions, let's just jump right in. Um, so I'm going to talk just quickly about my mission, which is art for joy's sake. And I know you can't see my face, but that's okay. You can just look at Lynn and her beautiful smile. Yay. <laughs> so a lot of you already know my mission across the board for Momental Designs, both of my businesses and Christy Rice for the Artful Life is art for joy's sake. And you're probably like, what in the world does that mean? Um, and for me, in 2013, my business had its most, quote unquote, successful year, its most profitable year. Um, we see your reflection. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, my reflection. Great. Anyway, <laughs> um, so 2013 was, quote unquote, a great year for me business wise. But personally, um, it was a really rough year. And um I came to a breaking point where I was really, I realized I was creating art um, and doing all of that not for me anymore at all. It was all about other people. It was all about my clients. It was all about everyone else. And um, I woke up one morning. It was a Wednesday. I remember it specifically. I woke up and I didn't go to work for a week. And um, in that week, a lot of things happened personally. And I kind of had a reawakening. And in that week, I started painting again, but painting in a very different way, painting in a way that uh, really spoke to my heart, my soul, and was had no other agenda other than the actual act of making. Uh, and so over the last two years, I've, I've followed along that personal journey and I've shared a lot of it on Instagram, but then I realized I want to bring this, my knowledge and what I've learned along the way to other people and how just the simple act of making, putting a few marks on paper, a few brush strokes on paper can really help you find joy and can, you know, in, in big ways and small, change your life. So that is what Art for Joy's Sake is all about. Lynn, if you want to chime in and talk at all about your experience with art, I know you, you do have a passion for art. I don't know a lot about it, so I'd love to hear more and how, what place it has in your life. Are 
Are you asking me? Yes, Sorry. I am. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I thought I'm, maybe you were still talking no. to the people who have tuned in. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure. sorry. No. I am paying attention. It's you. I thought so, there was a delay. <laughs> art in my life. Art's role in my life. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, I grew up studying music. I'm a classically trained musician. And in college, I minored in dance. So um, art in that form, in the music and um, dance form has always been a part of my life. I still, um, I hate running. I know it's trendy to do marathons and triathlons right now, but I can't do it. I just <laughs> hate it so much. There's no joy in it for me, but, um, exercise obviously important. And we'll talk about that a little bit later, but, uh, I do workouts. I'll either turn hip hop on the iPod and just dance in front of the mirror, which is embarrassing, but a good workout. Um, or I do a workout called Ballet Beautiful, um, which does streaming, uh, just ballet workouts, which is, oh, nice. I love. It's sort of Pilates and yoga and ballet moves. And um, so that's in my life daily. And, um, and it has the same, well, one, it has health benefits, obviously, because it's exercise, but it has the same benefits of, that art does. I also write every day. Um, it doesn't get published every day, but I do write every day, and that's a creative outlet for me. And um, every, like, two or three months or so, I will just get into the mood to sketch. And so um, I have charcoal pencils and a sketchbook, and I will just uh, sort of freeform draw as a way to get my thoughts out onto paper or just doodle. So it does um, show up in my life. The, the music and the dance is the most consistent in the writing, but I do get into more of the um, fine art segment from time to time. I actually really love what you said about um, the ballet, the ballet mm -hmm. workout that you do, because uh -huh. I think that's one thing that I've run into. Um, you know, you don't have to be necessarily sitting down with a paintbrush and paints and paper to be making mm -hmm. art and to be activating that creative part of your soul. You know, right. it can be dance, it can be photography, it can be sculpting, it can be, you know, so many different things. So um, guys, who do we have on here today? Does anybody want to introduce themselves and say hi and tell us, um, you know, what you do, what your work is, why you're on here today? I'd love to hear from you guys. I know you're out there. Um, I'm afraid we might be losing a little bit of a connection and that might be a little bit of an issue. Um, does anybody want to give me a thumbs up, a heart or anything so I know that you're out there? Yeah, we might have a connectivity issue. I see some hearts. I see some hearts. Okay. All right. I think we're back on. Okay, good. Okay. I see people joining. Sorry, Lynn. I'm just, I think my network here is a little it's rough. Fine. Hey, Helen. Thanks for coming on. So guys, if you just joined, we are chatting with Lynn Stevens um, about art and business, and we're going to get into the nitty gritty, nitty gritty of it here soon. Um, I'm just backing out. Sorry, guys. This connection is really wonky. <clears throat> here we go. We're back on. Okay, great. Um, so what I was saying is that, you know, making art and finding your joy in art doesn't mean just sketching or painting. And I love that. So Lynn, you said something about free form drawing. Can you speak to that a little bit more? Um, probably not in the correct technical terms. No, no but, technical terms um, needed. I just have a sketchbook and it's blank pages. I bought it at Barnes and Noble and, um, got some pencils to go with it and it's just sort of like uh, morning pages for writing stream of consciousness writing i just do stream of consciousness sketching and the stuff doesn't always look like something but um it's probably doodling in its purest form like it's uh in the end it just looks like a mess but it helps me process those thoughts and get it out because uh just because of that mind body connection and getting things out on paper. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Myra, I know you're on here. Can you hear me, Myra? I would love you to, can you, I'm calling you out, Myra. Can you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself? Cause, um, 
that would be awesome if you'd be willing to. Are you there? Are you there? I hope you'd be willing to chat with us a little bit about what you do. And also we have Maida on here from Romania. Hey, there she is. Yeah, t introduce yourself. Talk to us. I want to hear about you because I, I know a little about you. <laughs> Great. Yay. Um, yeah, go for it. Uh, because we want to hear from you guys too. This the scope, great. Go ahead. Just just give us a little prompt, and maybe we can talk about it a little bit. Um, yeah. So guys, we want to hear from you. Someone said dancing is not or ballet is not embarrassing. <laughs> um, I am your stalker crush artist friend. I know you are, but not stalker. Put a, a strike through stalker. You're not a stalker. You're my artist friend. I love it. That's awesome. And what do you do? Remind me. How are you making art every day? Or are you making art every day? I'm curious. Um, <clears throat> she's typing. I know she is. Uh, so, yeah, we want to hear from you guys for real. We want to hear um, questions that you might have and how you are making time for this art making that has no agenda. I used to do full time, do art full time. Twins that are eight and a singleton who's nine. Oh gosh. So oh, you have your hands full. Yeah, she does have her hands full. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. So are you making time for it? Because it sounds like you do have a passion for it. And I've seen some of your work. Creative director before the boys. Gotcha. Very cool. Very cool. Do you struggle? Do you struggle to make time for it? <laughs> and here we go. I love Periscope. It's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying super hard to make time for it. Absolutely. And I know, Myra, you were the one, I believe, remind me, but you were the one interested in the small palette. Um, is that, that was you, right? You were interested in my travel palette. Um, I think you had emailed me about that. And I, the reason I bring up the travel palette is because one of the things that we talked about, oh my gosh, five boys for a play date. You're a saint. You're a <laughs> saint for bringing that into your house. I want to buy your palette a lot. Yeah, so something that we had talked about last week in our Periscope was making room for making art, mm -hmm. whatever that type of art might be. Um, so making space, making physical space, not only mental space. Mm -hmm. um, I use watercolor and aqua brush to write ideas in my personal development journal. Oh, I'm going to write that down, Maida. So you use watercolor as a means to take notes. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Well, I know all about that. <laughs> um, so making a physical space, not only a, a mental space to, mm -hmm. to do this and also being ready, being ready to, we talked a lot about this, Lynn, about being ready to capture those tiny, tiny moments of your day that mm -hmm. might otherwise go wasted, go wasted on, you know, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and capture mm -hmm. those moments for art making. And they can be mm -hmm. small little snippets of time. Um, mm -hmm. Please put a picture on Instagram, Maida. I would love to see your watercolor notes. You should use the hashtag watercolor notes. Um, it's one that I use, so um, I'd love to see some of your some of your notes as well. So, um, so yeah, Lynn, can you can you speak to that a little bit about making a physical space for art making, and if if that is something that resonates with you? Um, I. I don't actually have a physical space for it. I have a kitchen table where I am now, and I'm yeah. showing Christy earlier. We're joined by a little army guy. <laughs> uh, this morning, everything did not get cleaned up after breakfast. <laughs> but um, I have, uh, because I do a lot of writing, yeah. I always um, have a physical note uh, notebook and pen in my purse with me at all times, along with the notes app on my phone. And then with the um, the ballet workouts, I actually have the ballet, it's called balletbeautiful.com. I promise I do not get paid by them, but they can <laughs> pay me if they want. Yeah. But um, they have streaming workouts. So whether I'm traveling, wherever I am in a hotel room, I can stream them on my phone or my laptop and they go with me everywhere. And so I have room so um i don't have like a dedicated space in my house um or anything like that it's just for me it's more of making sure there's time to do it mm -hmm. and that those things are accessible wherever i am because i do travel a lot right now yeah. for my job um so really for me it's more accessibility mm -hmm. than having sort of a sacred 
space within my home. Yeah, yeah, that's huge. Yeah, absolutely. So I think, and I was, you know, mentioning Myra um, wanting to buy my travel palette because I've started creating these smaller palettes that literally mm -hmm. fit. Because I literally carry like a crossbody bag, and it's I'm tiny. tiny. Yeah, it's <laughs> tiny. And I used to carry these ridiculous, um, huge bags, and I just can't handle it anymore. So I have a palette that is super slim and super tiny. And I have a brush, you know, one of those brushes that holds the water. And I think, so that's kind of what you're talking about, accessibility. So, mm -hmm. you know, make mm -hmm. a physical space if you are at home a lot. Or make, you know, give yourself that accessibility to your materials um, so you have them when you need them. Oh, the pigments I create for my palette are beautiful. Thank you. And Myra, I have not forgotten. I definitely am still thinking about offering the Pure Pigment Travel Palettes. Um, but probably not until March or so, but I'm thinking about it. Mm. Great. And guys, there were a couple comments that came up on the screen and I think I missed them. They disappeared. I think, um, Mado was one of them. So if you want to ask your questions again or your comments again, love to see them. Love, love, love to see them. I got a lot going on. Yeah. Yeah. You can say that again for sure. For <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, Hey Katie, thanks for joining. Um, <laughs> I started watercoloring because oil and acrylic is not an option with toddlers around. Right. Absolutely. Oh, right. Yeah, absolutely. Watercolor is super, um, you know, super accessible. It's easier to transport. It is a little less forgiving than oil and, and acrylic, but you know, what are you going to do? Um, but no, that's a great point. So awesome. Um, Lynn, you had mentioned the phrase stream of consciousness. Mm -hmm. Can you explain that a little bit? Because I'm not sure. It's it's not something I've always known. Can you explain that a little bit for anybody who might not be completely in the know on what that means? Sure. Um, in layman's terms, uh, stream of consciousness just refers to either sitting down to write or sitting down to paint or um, verbally talking and just letting the thoughts come out. They may make no sense, but come out as they... Uh, should not necessarily sitting and editing, um, actually no editing involved. Mm -hmm. And so whatever hits the paper, it's just coming out. And um, like I mentioned earlier, one of the writing exercises I do, um, not every day, but most days is called Morning Pages. And there's an entire book and workbook on it by um, Julia Cameron um, from The Artist's Way. And you basically write when you wake up in the morning, write three pages. Um, just fill them stream of consciousness. It doesn't have to make sense. It probably won't make sense. Um, and usually I find for me by the end of page three, I usually have some sort of mental breakthrough. And But it's the two and a half pages that preceded that that allowed those thoughts to come to the surface. And I've been doing this for years. I have almost all of my journals since I was 14 years old. Wow. I thought I invented the morning pages <laughs> method. And then I found out there was a whole movement that's been around since before I was born. But um, it does work really well for me. And if you use writing as an artistic outlet, um, it can work really well with that. That's really interesting, the morning pages. I wrote that down. And guys, just so you're aware, <clears throat> I am going to, I'm recording this. And I am for sure going to be putting it up on YouTube. So, um as we're sharing and I'm sure Lynn is going to have even more awesome little snippets and books for you to read and talk about that. So you will be able to um, see that forever and ever. Amen on YouTube and not have to worry about the replay. So, and guys, if you see that little dude in the bottom right hand corner of your screen, if you hit that, um, you can go ahead and share this scope with anybody that you're following on Twitter or on Periscope. If there's anybody, no pressure, but if there's anybody that you think might want to hear a little bit about what we're talking about today, uh, making room for art. And, you know, we are probably going to get into um, the word busy a little bit and the craziness of running a business. So if anybody you know might be interested in that topic, please invite them. We would love that. Um, and also, if you're new to Periscope, you just tap the screen as many times as you want if we're saying something you love. Um, and you can give us hearts. And that makes us feel good. Thanks so much. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead on the psychology of that, Lynn. No, okay, that's a whole other scope. <laughs> that is a whole other scope. The psychology of likes? All yeah. The dopamine hits yeah. again? 
you do get it does release <coughs> oxytocin and dopamine are you serious those likes mm -hmm. okay so i'm not just insane social media is literally addictive wow that's great it's in your head and it's literally in your head that's really exciting that's good to know <laughs> that's actually terrifying <laughs> <laughs> Well, I always say social media doesn't make a person good or bad. It amplifies who they already are. Ah. So um, it's addicting, but it definitely uh, can, uh, just like money, money's amoral. Social media is amoral. It just sends you down the path you're going faster. Interesting. Can you, you know, something just popped into my head. Can you mm -hmm. speak to that a little bit? Because I know from past scopes, aim into that, right? From past scopes that I've done with a bunch of these gals that are on here now, um, being distracted by social mm -hmm. media is a huge roadblock to mm -hmm. this art making that we're, that a lot of us seem to be invested in. Mm -hmm. How can we, you know, we, we can't ignore social media. It's a part of our lives. You know, right. how do we integrate? How do we integrate the art making with the social media in a, a healthy way? <laughs> okay. Well, to answer that, let's back up a little bit. Um, and this actually ties into the impact that art has on our brains. Mm -hmm. But um, each of us has about 100 billion neurons in our brains. This is the geeky stuff, guys. So just hang with me for a it's second. all good. Go for um, it. And your brain generates more power than all of the cell phones on the planet combined. And so we can choose to use our brains to create healthy thought patterns or toxic thought patterns. Mm -hmm. And the more we choose to engage healthy thought patterns, the stronger um, those uh, become. And it doesn't weaken the toxic thought patterns that may be in our subconscious or may be there, like things that happen in childhood or beliefs we've long held and haven't stopped to examine to replace. But because it's making the other ones stronger, um, that gives the brain the opportunity to recall those when we come to towards times of stress. So um, in the neuron fields, there are a lot of cells and inside those cell bodies are chromosomes and those chromosomes create DNA and DNA of a course is the genetic code. And as that genetic code expresses, it creates amino acids. And those amino acids then group together to make proteins, which create dendrites, which some people think look like roots of trees and so some people like that visual am i planting healthy roots or am i planting toxic roots that are going to rot everything else in my brain and then the entire process starts all over again um, and it does this tens of thousands of times a day and so a lot of people like to think of the um uh or a lot of people tend to think of what's happening in our brains is sort of just this nebulous woo woo sort of pop psychology thing, but these are physical actions that are happening in our brain with every choice we make. And so as we um, create art, what that's doing, when you do things that bring you pleasure or that are positive, it's creating that whole process I just described is happening and it's creating healthy thought patterns. And so if you, um, are in business. I know some of you watching are entrepreneurs like Christy and I are, um, or if you're in a stressful job, or if you're just uh, have a conflict with someone, if you uh, think about that um, for 10 minutes a day, that's over an hour a week. And at the end of two months, it takes 63 days for a thought to fully implant itself. But at the end of two months, you've literally planted a toxic thought. And if you take those 10 minutes a day and watercolor or write or do your exercising or ballet or whatever artistic outlet you have, um, you are using it, you're then using that time to uh, create the healthy patterns. And, and these, are, these patterns aren't just, um, again, some nebulous idea. These are physical things that are happening in your brain, like these cells are generating all these things just like um, cells generate the hair on your head and our skin and uh, all of that. So these are physical things happening in our brain. So when it comes to social media, again, every image we take in, every text we take in, if social media is bumming you out, 
change who you follow because we can use it to be inspired. We can use it to inspire our creativity and then go and create something that maybe we wouldn't have thought of before. So you can use it in a healthy way. Um, but we can use it. Uh, Christy and I have a friend named Marcy Bloom, and she uh, calls calls it compare and despair. Mm. We can use it to compare ourselves yeah. and then despair over it. Um, earlier this year, I decided to take a six week sabbatical from Instagram in particular. Um, I still did Twitter. Uh, I don't use Facebook for business at all, so um, I have a lot fewer followers on there, and I only use it for personal things. So I still did that, checked in, see pictures of my nieces and nephews. But with the social media, do what you need to do to make it work for you. And if it just depresses you all the time or you get angry, um, change who you follow. And we find this compare and despair thing a lot with Instagram and with Pinterest because our brains do process images a lot more quickly and a lot more uh, deeply than we do text. And so Pinterest can really, oh, I wish my house looked like that and it's mm -hmm. never going to look like that. And I've unfollowed some people's um, interior design boards just because I felt it was making me um, mentally in a place I didn't want to be. Um, but I do use it to <coughs> find recipes. And I eat so much better now because of Pinterest. So <laughs> it has my family eats better. That's I awesome. cook better. I follow uh, Bon Appetit or, and Gourmet on Twitter. And I learn cooking techniques from those. So those things actually not only affect me, but they um, definitely benefit my in real life friends and family because they're eating better and are healthier now too. And things taste better. So that's another artistic outlet for me, cooking. And I only learned how to cook five years ago. So I'm still very excited about that. And Get social out. media has helped that a lot. But really cool. oh. definitely with social media, we can choose to use it to encourage us and empower us and learn things we didn't know before. Or we can use it to suck time and drag us down and um, absorb uh, negativity, whether or not people are intentionally putting out negativity, sometimes they're just sharing something that brings them joy. But mm. if our mindset is in a place of comparison and that's going to drag us down, then unfollowing that person may have nothing to do with them. And it usually doesn't. Usually it's just how we are interpreting it at uh, any given season in our lives. Oh my gosh, Lynn. Wow. Yeah. Thank you <laughs> so much. Yeah. You guys, anyone who just, just joined, I saw a couple people hop on. Just kind of want to recap. And Lynn, just shut me down if I'm saying this wrong, please. So you're literally saying that something physical is happening when we take 10 minutes a day to make art or dance or write. Something physical is actually happening in our brain. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's amazing. That, that speaks. And one thing I find that people tend to not necessarily forget, but maybe don't give active thought to, is that our brains are in our bodies. And so we tend to treat our brains as if they're separate from our bodies. And so um, obviously nutrition and exercise are very important for people in our brains, but so is the artistic outlet because of the positive pathways, um, neural pathways that it's developing. And so if we spend the time doing something that's going to feed those toxic roots that we talked about, mm. that's only making those negative pathways stronger. And then when other things happen, that's what your brain's going to recall because that's what's building up. And so I always say, take care of your brain, but your brain is in your body. So take care of your body. And that's why, um, you know, for me, dance is an artistic outlet, but it's also exercise, so it's sort of two birds with one stone. And that's why uh, some people, like I said, I hate running, but oddly enough, I love spin class. I don't love <laughs> it while I'm in there. I'm like, this sucks. I'm going to die. And as soon as I'm <laughs> off the bike, all those endorphins release. And I'm like, when's the next class? Let's go. Like a crazy person. But um, it's because that is releasing those positive chemicals, those endorphins that help create those positive neural pathways. So all of this is important. Art 
is I always say people have a right to live fully, not just merely. Obviously, we need basic shelter and food and nutritious food for our bodies to function and perform at their peak and uh, to the maximum capacity. But we also need access to the arts. And um, when it comes to this is obviously the week of Thanksgiving mm. and then Hanukkah and Christmas are coming up. And this holiday season really is, I call it a season of celebrating generosity, like starting this week and going throughout the other two holidays and whichever holiday you may celebrate. And so that generosity is going to come from the way we, um, the way we feed ourselves and we call it feeding our soul, but really it's feeding our brains and feeding those positive pathways. Oh my gosh. Love it. Guys, I just invited a bunch of people. I reminded on Facebook, we've got more people hopping on. This is incredible. Thank you so much, Lynn. You said people have a right to live fully. Can you finish? What was that? People have a right to live fully, not just merely. And I say that because a lot of times when we get into, you know, um, helping others less fortunate, mm -hmm. and this season has a big focus on that because it is a season of generosity, um, you know, buying a toy as a Hanukkah or Christmas gift for a child doesn't just um, bring them a little bit of joy, but playing with that toy actually helps, just like art, develop those positive neural pathways. So, um, obviously, people need food, volunteer in soup kitchens, uh, buy the brown bass that the grocery store sets out for a $10 donation, donate food, donate clothing. Um, I always say if you can, donate brand new clothing rather than used. Obviously used clothing is great, but you know, something's fun about receiving a new item, a new outfit, and that reinforces those positive pathways as well. But people have a right to live fully, not just merely. So basic needs obviously need to be met. That's the bottom of um, Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs. But those other needs need to be met in order to live a full life. And so as you're thinking about your charitable giving this year, I know, Christy, you support um, arts charities. And I think that's really important, obviously, basic needs, but also the ones that meet emotional needs, because those help create um, the thought patterns that will empower these kids or adults or whomever it may be to enact positive change in their life and to believe that they can and are worthy of a job that they're applying for or that they can leave an abusive situation and they're strong enough to do that. And so art actually empowers people to make those decisions. That's amazing. You know, it, I'm going to go slightly off topic here because I just, what you just said made me think of something that, you know, with our charitable giving, we can really support not just physical needs, but emotional needs. And guys, I'm just going to give a little plug for something that I am, am, am doing and am passionate about. Um, I'm going to bring it up on the screen here uh, because it really ties right into what, to what Lynn is chatting about here. Uh, I have started a... A little mini mission here and I am desperately trying to get it off the ground. I'm gonna, sorry Lynn, bye Lynn. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna put it on the screen here and it's art for every child and this is, this is something that I prayed a lot about and thought a lot about uh, because I this mission is really meant to satisfy an emotional need and a need for children to be creating art and it's not donating clothing clothing and it's not doing donating money necessarily but we are working with um a, a, a group called Naruk in tulcha county in romania and we're um we're really trying to get this program art for every child off the ground um, I have been searching for years and years, and Lynn knows this, we had a conversation years ago about, you know, what it takes to really start some type of mission uh, that, that really has some, some, some meat behind it, you know, some meat on its bones. And you have to be super, what did you say, Lynn? You have to be super passionate about it, like so mm -hmm. passionate that you, you know, would drop everything else for it or else it's just not going to go anywhere. When I searched for years for something that I could do that I really... I like get chills about and something that I wake up in the middle of the night thinking about and that's what this is. So guys, I would totally encourage you if you want to learn more about 
um, this art for every child that I'm doing. There are ways to get involved, and we're get, going to be um, blasting that out the first quarter of 2016. Um, we are going to be looking for artist pen pals, um, and we're going to be looking to work with um, you know, artists of all different varieties from planners. I'm in Romania, but I've been thinking about it. Yes, um, so we're going to be looking, we're basically creating art journals for kids in uh, Tulcea County, Romania. Um, there's several different orphanages that are serviced by this group, Naruk, and uh, they have a really big heart and passion for art and art therapy in these child's lives. So we are going to be working with them to create these journals, and they're going to actually be art pen pal journals. So these kids just really crave actually connecting with an adult and with someone else. So we're going to be sending our, our pictures and ultimately in 2017 hope to um, head over for a missions trip and actually work with them one-on-one. -on -one. So anyway, there is my little plug. I'm really sorry, but I'm super excited about it. And Lynn made me think of it. So head to christyrice.com slash pages slash giving back and check it out. Um, I love, love, love that you brought that up about giving and how that can also release, you know, those, those, what did you call them? Oh, I don't know. Uh, endorphins. Endorphins. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I just want to say before I, I, I have another prompt here, I want to ask Lynn, um, but someone asked why not Facebook for business? I want, I, I have not forgotten your questions, questions. I just want to get back to it in a little bit. But okay. unless you want to go ahead for it now. Oh, yeah, I can just clarify that. Sure. Quick. I personally don't use Facebook for bus my business. Mm -hmm. I think Facebook for business, um, if it fits with your strategy, makes <coughs> a lot of sense. But for me, everyone who was on my Facebook business page and interacted with it also interacted with Twitter. And it just, for me, became where do I want to focus that attention? I'm on Instagram. Uh, I do Pinterest. I have all of that. And so... Uh, for me, I cut Facebook, and also they keep changing the algorithms, and sometimes now you have to pay in order for it to show up, and it doesn't always show up. So if it makes sense for your business strategy, go for it. Facebook can be very effective. But for me, I decided to cut my business page and just keep my personal page. And I have some friends from work on there who are personal friends, but I don't post work updates on there. Um, my friends from elementary school and high school are happy that I'm happy and I have a job I love, but they don't necessarily <laughs> care and they don't need to see it every day. It's not my, yeah. my job isn't my full identity. And so uh, I post a lot about that on Twitter and leave my Facebook sort of a private little space. Gotcha. So just a personal decision, really. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So I kind of wanted to circle back to a point, and I know it seems like a simple point, but it's pretty powerful when I heard it, at least you had mentioned if Instagram is bumming you out to uh -huh. take a hard look at who you're following. Right. And it may not be, like I said, uh, it may not be someone who's super negative. They may be a super mm -hmm. positive person, but if it's something, if they're posting something like, again, interior design is such a common one because we love our homes and we want them to look a certain way. And, uh, a lot of us in our culture strive for perfection, and um, and so they may be posting uh, pictures of their beautiful home, and it may be bumming you out that yours doesn't look that way. That has nothing to do with them. Right. They shouldn't stop posting because it's bumming you out, but there's nothing wrong. Um, you know, codependency isn't a great thing. There's nothing wrong with <laughs> saying this is bumming me out so I'm just not going to take that in I'm not going I'm just going to put a filter and not allow that to come in until I can deal with this issue of my dealing with this comparison and like get at peace with it myself and then maybe you add them back in later but it's not personal against them it's just maybe an issue you're dealing with so um, and sometimes some people are just super negative and you need to cut that toxicity out. But sometimes it has nothing to do with that. It's just really how you are internalizing it. And um, and there's nothing weak about saying, I recognize this is an issue for me, so I'm not going to allow that in while I spend some time figuring out how to not compare myself and to just let things go a little bit. Yeah. I have a great example. I'm going to be super transparent here. Um, and I'm probably going to, yeah, I'm just going to, I'm going to share my example. Um, so 
I need to do more of what Lynn's talking about and, and you know, unfollow some, some accounts that really distract me. But one in particular is something, and I have not unfollowed all of their accounts, but I've unfollowed the main one for years. And I'm being super honest here, very transparent. For years, I, and still to this day, I start thinking about it and I get like tight in the chest. I want to be in Martha Stewart Weddings magazine. It is like a, a dream of mine. The girls at the studio know it. Every it, It's just something that I've never been able to make happen. And it would get to the point, I'll never forget this one time, I followed, you know, I followed Martha Stewart Weddings on Instagram. They posted this editorial on stationery they had done about rose gold foil. And like we had just done this epic and i'm use i don't use the word epic lightly but it was an epic rose gold foil invitation all hand painted it was crazy and the one that they had posted was super it was beautiful but it was super plain so like i got so mad and so worked up that i started posting like all different shots of this rose gold foil invitation that we had done and i kind of lost my mind over it a little bit and i literally i took a step back the next day i woke up and i was like whoa hey crazy and I unfollowed them <laughs> you know what I mean so like uh -huh. it's so true and and so there's my little personal um, anecdote um, my and little... that had nothing uh, they weren't doing anything wrong in that no situation. absolutely not I mean it was not. just you knowing okay it's something I need to work on and so I'm just going to cut the distraction <laughs> while we do this amen amen <laughs> Hey guys, I just want to check in. Can you hear us okay? I have been losing my connection in and out this whole time. Um, so can you guys just give me a thumbs up or ask a question or give us some hearts? I just want to make sure you can hear us and see us and everything is working as it should. Um, I'm going to back out here and come back in. Wish I could stay. I've got to get the boys. So nice to see your faces. Thanks for coming in so much in and out so it is coming in and out yeah excellent connection oh good well we're, we've got a good connection with romania that's awesome <laughs> good to know <laughs> um okay so i am just going to kind of go on to a next the next topic i wanted to, to speak about let me bring up my notes here and i think we'll be able to kind of wrap things up um great connection in missouri awesome um um, sorry. sorry. Shannon, do you have any questions for us? You've been here the whole time, which I appreciate. Thank yeah. you so much. Um, and guys, just remember, on, you can watch this on the replay. Anybody watching this on the replay, feel free to email me, hello at christyrice.com, for questions. Uh, but I will be posting this full interview permanently on YouTube in the coming days. So you can check it out there. Uh, so what I wanted to bring up... And if you've been on my other scopes, you know all about it. And I'm going to try to put this in view of the camera here. Hi, there they are. Um, these are my proof copies, sorry guys, of the books, the watercoloring books. They are available on pre-sale now um, through Barnes & Noble, Books A Million, and Amazon.com. And so the whole point of these books are called Painterly Days. We have a pattern version, a flower version, and a woodland version. And these are watercoloring books, guys. So I'm sure you know all about them, but I just wanted to bring them into the mix here because Lynn was just in Orlando and she gave a talk. Um, and we will let her share as much as she'd like to share from that talk. But I know one of the slides that she put up on screen for the people that were at the, the talk was featuring this book, The Woodland. And the caption was, pull the weeds, water the flowers, correct? Yes, correct. Can, can you speak to that? So pull the weeds, water the flowers. Can you speak to that a little bit? Sure. So um, it's a phrase I always like to say, and I think I first <coughs> wrote it. Um, it was first published on my blog several years ago, but um, it's just one of my mantras that I always say, pull the weeds, water the flowers. And it goes back to... Uh, the physical process in the brain that I described earlier. And so there is actually neuroscience. Um, over the last 30-ish years, 
has shown how you can actually break down toxic thought patterns. We are not getting into that today. It's very complicated. <laughs> um, we're just going to focus on building up the positive ones. But so pulling the weeds needs to happen. That's another conversation. But watering the flowers, really water what needs to be watered and don't water the weeds. And like I said, if you spend 10 minutes a day stewing over a competitor or a conflict or your neighbor or another mom in the play group and you guys just clash, and don't get along, um, that's 10 minutes that you're not spending doing watercoloring or writing or dancing or singing or sculpting or whatever your artistic outlet is. And so those artistic outlets are a way to water the flowers in your life and a way to uh, physically in your brain create neural pathways that are filled with positivity and um, that strengthen those so that when stress comes, your brain is recalling the healthy things you're planting rather than the toxic that may have been built up over the years, sometimes since childhood. And so if you're stewing over a competitor and having a pity party, and trust me, I am the queen of pity parties. If I ever write a memoir, I'm going to call it my baggage comes as a matching set and my pity parties are catered. So I get it. I'm preaching to myself here too. But if you spend even just 10 minutes, and you all spend more than 10 minutes on a pity party, um, you're watering the weeds. And so focus on the flowers, water the flowers. Um, you know, there's ways to pull those weeds, therapy, um, and different things that we won't get into. But really focus on which choice am I going to make? And it's difficult. This is all easier said than done. But there are ways, whether that's exercising, creating art, which is the focus of this conversation, uh, fueling yourself with good nutrition, doing things that bring you joy, because those joys trigger all that process. And it happens. Negativity also triggers that process, <laughs> but it's implanting the negativity rather than the healthy pattern. So that's what I mean by water the flowers is where are you going to put your focus? Um, because that focus has a, um, a physical benefit to you and that physicality is happening in your brain. And after my talk last week, which was on this topic of neuroplasticity and business, and it was uh, for a lot of business owners or people in senior management at the companies they work for, and uh, one of the ladies said to me afterwards, and I told her I was going to steal this for all future talks on this topic, she said, if your doctor told you you had chemo, you would never, or I'm sorry, if your doctor told you you had cancer, you would never say, well, I don't have time for chemo, so I'm going to skip it and hope for the best. Huh. Um, but we treat our brains like that. And, you know, we are, whatever we're dealing with, and we say, like, you know, I know this is an issue, but I know I shouldn't be thinking about this. And you would never say, I don't have time for chemo. You should never say, I don't have time to sit and create art even for 10 minutes. I don't have time to exercise. I don't have time to cook a healthy meal instead of eating something that's not great for me. Um, whatever it may be whatever your outlet may be that reinforces those positive neural pathways, um, you have to create time for it. And I really don't like the phrase finding time because we never find time. You're never like, oh, there's an extra hour just laying on the sidewalk. Um, we really have to make it a priority and schedule it into the 24 hours we have. And, but um, like this, uh, my friend and colleague said, if you had cancer, you would never say, I don't have time for chemo. Mm -hmm. And so when we know there's an issue we're dealing with um, emotionally or mentally, we need to make the time to do the things that are scientifically proven to help us in the long run and to create the thought patterns that will help us make better choices for ourselves, our families, our business, our employees, and all of that. Oh my gosh. You know, guys, I just have to say one thing. You all need to watch the replay of this. You have to, because there's so much packed into this, this chat here today. It's crazy. So I encourage y'all to watch the replay for sure. That's so true. Moms especially need it. 
need it designed with their kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll start dancing in my living room tomorrow. Yes, please. Yay! Yeah. Yeah, dealing with their kids. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love what Lynn said about the phrase finding time versus so it's finding time versus making time is that your point Lynn uh, finding time versus prioritizing time prioritizing time we all have 24 hours um, you're not gonna find an extra hour mm -hmm. and how we fill those 24 hours is up to us and uh, that's that's basically I mean that's again all of this is I always like for years, you know, they say breakfast is the most important year, meal of the day, mm -hmm. eat breakfast, eat a healthy breakfast. Well, when I was like, yeah, 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 I have my cup of coffee, I'll eat at lunch. And it wasn't um, a weight thing. It had nothing to do with like, I just didn't want to make time or yeah. I didn't want to make that a priority. And then once I started eating breakfast, I was like, oh yeah, they were right. So a lot of times we know what we're supposed to do and we just don't do it. Yeah. And um, that's why I think envisioning uh, the dendrites uh, and those neural pathways as tree roots can be a really good way to envision it because then it's, am I, is what I'm doing right now planting toxic roots? And roots affect the entire ecosystem. So if we're planting toxic, they're going to rot everything else. If we're planting healthy, they make everything else big and strong and help the ecosystem around it. So I think that's a good visual, which is why sometimes it's a little hard, especially if we weren't biology or science geeks. And those were classes where we were like, let's just pass this. The C is fine. Um, let's just get through this so we can graduate. Uh, sometimes envisioning those when we can't see how they actually look and we can't bring that mental image, envisioning them as the tree roots can be a good way to remember, okay, is this 10 minutes, like, could I be doing, not necessarily something more productive, but it is productive in the sense that it is feeding your brain in a healthy way. Garbage in, garbage out, good things in, good things out. Exactly. Yeah. All our grandmas were correct. They were. Yes, Nancy. Amen to that. Amen to that. Neuroscience has shown that grandma was right. Yay, grandma. Woo! <laughs> uh, and I think, you know, I've, I'm doing these chats with some of my favorite people around. And the reason I'm doing it is because, you know, the, Lynn and last week with Laura Casey, and we have some really fun ones coming up. Um, you know, I definitely look up to you guys and you've had success and, you know, success though, in terms of, I've seen a transition in your lives in terms of balance and, you know, you, oh, did we lose connection? Lynn, can you hear me? Oh, we lost connection on Skype. Bummer. Okay, guys, hold on. So what I was saying is that the reason I have, um, here she's calling me back, yay. Oh dear, we've lost Lynn. We've lost her. Uh, so what I was saying guys, while I try to reconnect with Lynn, uh, is that, you know, I've chosen it's very specific people to have these periscopes with because I've seen a transition in their lives. I've seen them, you know, Laura go from crazy busy and just chasing hustle and chasing perfection to a place in her life where, you know, she is focused and very specific about how she spends her time. And she has seen great success in her personal life and her business because of that. And I see the same thing in a lot of, in, in what Lynn has done in her life over the years too. So that's why I have these folks on here and hopefully they can, 